Hello friends, welcome to Feeding Artists. My name is Amanda and today we're going to be doing a microphone comparison. So I have four different microphones I'm going to be testing in this video. The reason I chose these microphones are just because they're the ones that I personally have access to and can test myself. So let's meet our contestants. Our first contestant is the Blue Snowball microphone. It retails for about $70 and it has three settings. The first setting, unfortunately, on my microphone does not work, but this is the regular cardioid condenser. The second setting is the cardioid condenser, but with a negative 10 decibel pad. And the third setting is an omnidirectional microphone. Contestant number two is the ATR2500. This retails for about $100 and is a cardioid condenser microphone. Our third contestant is the Sennheiser E825S. It retails for about $80 and is a cardioid dynamic microphone. And our fourth contestant, the big guy here, is the Rode NTG4 Plus. Retails for a whopping $370 and it's a super cardioid condenser microphone, and I will be using mine with the negative 10 decibel pad. For the Sennheiser microphone and the Rode microphone, I'm recording them into my Tascam DR100 Mark II. For these two microphones, they are XLR, so you will need something to record them into, where the Blue Snowball and the ATR2500 are just USB mics, so you can record those direct into your computer. So I'll be comparing these microphones with vocals, electric guitar through my amp, and with acoustic guitar, and when I'm going through and editing these, all I'm going to do is normalize all of them to negative six, just so they're the same volume. I think it's easier to compare them that way, but I won't be doing any other editing to them. And I'm also going to be leaving the peak levels of the original audio on the test files. So you'll be able to see kind of originally how loud or how quiet it was just visually by looking at the number. So with that out of the way, let's hear the vocal samples. You are sorry. For it all, you are sorry for it all. You are sorry for it all. You are sorry for it all. You. For the vocals, and this may come as no surprise, I am going to recommend the Rode mic. Although this microphone is mostly made for kind of talking like I am right now, it is obviously made to capture the voice well, which also applies to vocals. So I do think that this will give you the best signal of all of them. I also think that this microphone gives the best dry signal, which when you're recording is the best. It just doesn't really have any reverb to it, which like you can really hear on the blue snowball on the third setting. So I think this signal from the Rode mic is going to give you the most flexibility when it comes to editing. Going through some of the other microphones, the blue snowball in its current form for me, I think is pretty much worthless for recording vocals. If you were to record on it, you would want to use that first setting. Unfortunately, I can't show you guys what it sounds like, but that would be the best option for this microphone. As far as the ATR and the Sennheiser, I'd say they're both about equal when it comes to audio quality. The ATR, you're gonna to have to amplify a little bit more, which generally isn't the best, but I do think that its sound is a bit more unique. Again, this could be a good thing or a bad thing. The Sennheiser probably has a more clean signal that you can kind of mess with more in the edit, or the ATR, I feel like, kind of already has a sound of its own. So depending on how you feel about that sound, maybe that's the mic for you, but maybe it's not. I'd say between those two, it's really just personal preference. Now let's take a look at the electric guitar samples.
electric guitar, I would recommend the ATR2500, and this, if anything else, is really just by process of elimination. So let's start out with the Rode mic. So although the quality of the audio is pretty decent, the problem that I have with this microphone is that there is no dynamic variation at all. It seems like either the microphone or the Tascam recorder that I'm using has a hard limiter at around negative seven decibels, and so just everything is hitting that level. There's not much below it, and it's not clipping, where the blue snowball mic was clipping, so I mean, it's good to have that limiter in that sense, but it just doesn't sound very good, and there's no dynamics to it, which, if you're making music, having dynamics is useful. So some ways to fix that would be if I took the microphone and just brought it away from the amp so that it wouldn't basically go over what the limiter was and then just end up having everything at negative seven. The problem with this is that you're gonna end up getting more room noise the further away your mic is from the amp. Generally, I think it's best to mic things closer if you can, and with this microphone, that is just not going to be an option. So the Sennheiser, you notice it more on the first set of clips than the second, but you can hear a pretty substantial hissing noise when you're playing a little bit more quietly. When you're playing louder, it doesn't seem like this is as much of an issue, but that's just really something that I don't want to have to worry about when I'm recording. So for the Blue Snowball, obviously the third set in clips, and you can kind of hear it a bit in the recording, even though I brought it back down, so that's just never ideal. And then the second setting, it's okay, but I think the ATR2500 does a better job with that, so I just... it's just not the best. <laughs> So with those three options out of the way, the ATR2500 is the only mic that remains, and therefore I'm gonna have to say that is the best mic for the purpose. And now let's listen to the acoustic guitar samples. I believe these microphones behave pretty similarly on acoustic guitar as they did for electric guitar. I would still recommend the ATR2500. I think it's the best and potentially only option out of these microphones that really worked for the purpose. I actually didn't notice when I was originally filming this video that the Sennheiser microphone does still have a lot of background noise when recording with acoustic. It's slightly less noticeable than with electric, but it still definitely is a problem, so I would not recommend that microphone. Now again, with the Rode mic, we have a similar problem that we had with the electric guitar, where it's just peaking at negative seven, and you can tell that there's just a hard limiter on there. You're not really getting any dynamic range with it. I do think it definitely handles acoustic better than electric, since it is a quieter instrument. So I don't think the Rode mic would be a bad choice, but you're definitely going to need to be careful about mic placement and making sure that it's far enough away from your guitar that it doesn't just hit the limiter on everything. 
And again, the Blue Snowball, I think, just doesn't have the best audio quality. And especially on the third setting, you could tell it just, like, does not sound very good. So I definitely would not recommend the Blue Snowball for this purpose. If you're just an all-around musician and only want to buy one microphone, I probably would recommend the ATR 2500 since I think overall it does a slightly better job and you're just not going to have to worry about it peaking and just kind of like going into overdrive every two seconds because this is a pretty loud mic and that's just so you can be distanced from it and it can record you like it's doing right now. But for instruments, that's not necessarily what you want in a microphone. So getting the ATR2500 is a lot cheaper and is probably going to serve you better than this one. So that is all I have to say about these microphones. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, if you have any different opinions or even if you have the same opinion, feel free to leave a comment below, like this video, and maybe consider subscribing. Thank you all for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful day.